So what we have displayed on the screen here is our binomial equation. And the simplest way to explain this is by continuing on our example of achieving 1 6 out of 3 rolls of the dice. So I've left our calculations in the top right hand corner there. And the binomial equation states that NCR, this NCR is called the binomial coefficient. Next we have P to the power R. Well P is our probability of success and R is our number of successes. And then inside the brackets we have 1 minus P. Well if P is the probability of a success then in essence this is the probability of a failure. 1 minus the probability of success is the probability of failure. And that's being raised to the power of n minus r, where n is the number of events and r is the number of successes. Now in our example, our number of events was 3, 3 rolls of the dice. And what we were looking for was the probability of one success, or the probability of rolling a 6 once. And our probability of success was a 6. So if we start to put some numbers into this formula, and we'll talk a little bit more about this binomial coefficient in a second, what we actually have is NCR, or N is 3, binomial coefficient 1. The probability of a success was a 6, and we was only having one of those, one success. The probability of a failure was 5, 6. And our number of events minus our number of successes up here in the power would be n, which is 3, minus r, which is 1, giving us 2. So before we talk about the binomial coefficient, let's look what else we have. We have our probability of a failure squared. Now when we multiplied along the branches, we noticed that in order for us to have one success, we had two failures, which is why we ended up with this 5, 6 squared here. If we go to the middle term, we've got a sixth to the power one. A sixth to the power one is our probability of a success to the power of our number of successes. And that's exactly what we see, again, when we multiplied along the branches. In each of those instances, we had the probability of a success, a sixth times five six squared. Now the final term then is our binomial coefficient. And our binomial coefficient can change depending on the number of successes we're looking for. Now the way that we enter this into our calculators is by using shift divide. And if you look on your calculator, above the divide key, there is an NCR. So let's just try this for our example here. And so we're going to input this into our calculators and we're going to press the following button sequence. First of all, we're going to press our number of events, which is three. Then we're going to press shift divide for our binomial coefficient. And then because we're only looking for one success in this instance, we're going to press one and then we're going to press equals. So let's do that now. We have three shift divide, and you'll see that the capital C is displayed in your display. And then we press one. And then the last thing we do is hit equals, and what we'll see is that that number comes out as three. That's as we would expect, because when we multiplied along the branches, we had three possible successes up here in the top right hand corner. So three shift divide one, well, quite often you hear this expressed as 3 choose 1, and that will come out as 3. So let me ask you a different question then. What is the probability that I would get two sixes in three rolls? Well, let's remove some of our working, and then we'll calculate this using our binomial formula. So if I want to know the probability that I roll two sixes out of three events, then my number of events is still 3, but this time my number of successes is 2. And my probability of a success is still going to be the same. The likelihood of rolling a 6 remains unchanged. So what we have, if we write this out, we have n choose r, or 3 choose 2. Our probability of success is a 6, but this time our number of successes is 2. 
and our probability of failure is still 5, 6, but this time we have 3 minus 2, or 1. Well, 5, 6 to the power 1 is just the same as saying 5, 6. So let's remove this bracket and the power and include our multiply sign. So let's calculate 3, choose 2. We've already said that the way we do that on our calculators is by clicking the number of events, that's still 3. Shift divide the number of successes, this is 2. We're just writing this here. Well, 3 choose 2 also comes out to be 3, the same as before. So our calculation is 3 times a sixth squared times 5 sixths, which comes out to be 0 0.0694. And if you'd used the tree view that we used previously, you would come out with exactly the same answer. So let's look at one more example applying this formula, and this time we're going to apply it to an engineering problem. So let's say in this example, the probability that a component is defective is 3 in every 100. And the way that we might determine that is by taking a batch of 100 and finding out how many are defective. So the probability that a component is defective is 3 in 100. And we want to find the likelihood that in a batch of 50, no more than two are defective. Well, hopefully you realize no more than two, we could have none defective. That's none from the batch of 50. One could be defective because one is no more than two. And we could also have two defective. So really what we're doing is we're looking at our 50 products and we're saying what's the likelihood of none of them being defective? plus the likelihood of one of them being defective, plus the likelihood of two of them being defective. And we're going to use our binomial equation for this. So this time, our number of events is going to be 50. Our number of successes, well this time, a success is determined by a defective component. So we're going for zero defective, one defective, and two defective. We have our probability that a component's defective, three in 100. And again, we have our value of R, 0, 1, and 2. Now, inside the brackets, we have 1 minus the probability that a component's defective. Or well, this is really the probability that the component isn't defective. And the probability that the component isn't defective is going to be 97 out of every 100. 97 out of 100 that were sampled weren't defective. And again, we have N minus R. We have our values for each of those. Now here's the important thing, we're going to need to apply that equation three times. And the reason why we're going to apply it three times is because we have three possible outcomes. We have an outcome that says from 50, we're choosing zero that are defective. Then we'll do our probability that is defective, which is three over 100. Or well, anything to the power zero is just one. And then we have the probability that it's not defective, 97 over 100. N minus R, 50 minus 0 is 50. But to that we need to add the probability that 1 will be defective. So we've got 50, choose 1. 3 hundredths to the power 1. 97 hundredths to the power 49. That accounts for only one being defective. And finally, we need to account for two being defective. So we have 50, choose two, 300 squared times 97 hundredths to the power 48 this time. So let's run each of those through our calculators independently. Let's run the top line through our calculators. This is the probability that none of the components are defective or they're all fit for use. And running that through the calculator gives us 0 0.2181 to four decimal places. Next we have the probability that just one's defective. So we have 50 choose one, 3 hundredths to the power one, 97 hundredths to the power 49. And that gives us an answer of 0.3372 to four decimal places. 
And finally, we have 50 choose 2 times 3 over 100 squared times 97 over 100 to the 48, which gives us 0 0.2555. Now adding those three probabilities up to get us the total probability of having not more than two defective components gives us 0 0.8108. So here we see that the probability of having not more than two defective components in the batch of 50 is 0 0.8108.